Hey everybody, this is graphic designer Roberto Blake of RobertoBlake.com helping you create something awesome today. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about how you become a web designer in 2015, how it's changed since I got started in web design about, what, 17 years ago when I was like 14 years old, and what you need to know today to succeed as a web designer, whether that be as a freelancer or working at an in-house company or working at an ad agency. One of the big questions that always comes up is, do you need to learn HTML code to be a web designer? And the short answer is yes and no. And I say that to say this, you can design websites without learning HTML coding, but it is not recommended. And just because you can code doesn't necessarily mean you can design. It requires both things. Part of the process of web design actually still requires some pen and paper because you have to plan these things out. You have to know a lot of things when you want to get started as a web designer. One of the first things is, what is the website going to be about? When you're taking on a web design project, just like any other graphic design project, you need to start with a client brief. Too many people, whether it's designers or whether it's more technical people, want to jump into the computer and not deal with human beings first and deal with pen and paper. Pen and paper is still part of the process and there's a reason for that. You need to organize your ideas. You need to have a hierarchy for the website. You need to know how many pages it's going to be. You need to determine, do those pages have different layouts and are there templates that need to be developed for specific parts of the website, different types of content that are gonna be on there, what media types are going to be on the website? Is it going to have a lot of images? Is it going to have a lot of video? Is there going to be an audio component? Is there going to be a blog? Is this an e-commerce website that needs to move products? And if so, what are we doing in terms of like taking credit card payments, PayPal? All of these things are important and they need to be decided before you even think about touching a keyboard and mouse. So people ignore the planning stages of a website and people don't know what to necessarily ask the clients. You need to ask the clients a lot of specific questions if you're gonna be designing websites for clients. And if it's a project team, you gotta make sure that you have a brief from your supervisor and you gotta know, well, who's supplying the content? Are you creating the images? Are the clients or your employer going to supply you with the images? As for the copy of the website, the text that's gonna go in each of these web pages, who's supplying that? Are you responsible for the copywriting? Are, is the copywriting going to be provided to you? And if so, I recommend requesting it be in a Word document sent to you in an email as an attachment so that you have the ability to just copy and paste it out of the Word document. You have it um, you know, to where you can strip out any formatting and you have a documented timeline of the fact that it was sent to you. Uh, so those are important things. If there are pictures, you need to know if they're going to be delivered to you digitally or are you going to have to scan them? If it's gonna be stock photos, you need to figure out who has the rights to them. So there's things that have nothing to do with coding, nothing to do with visual design, color theory, CSS, PHP, WordPress, any of that stuff that people take for granted as web designers to begin with. They don't know how to plan a website. The other thing is you need to understand how websites work. You need to understand that websites require a domain name. When you go to a .com, it's a domain name and you get that from a company like GoDaddy or Bluehost or one in one and you don't actually own it. You're more or less leasing it and you have to renew it every year and there's a cost to that. It might be $5.99, it might be $9.99, it might be $14.99. You know, it just depends on what your deal is and what your arrangement with your hosting company is. The other part of that is the web hosting is where the content and where your website sits. So you think of a web server as a house or an apartment that you're renting, your files are the furniture that fill it up. The files and the content, they belong to you, just like your furniture, but you don't own the web server. You don't own the property, if you will. You're just occupying it. So you have to pay that monthly fee and that's what web hosting is. And again, that might be $2.99, it might be $1.99, it might be $5.99, it might be $59.99 if you have a dedicated server. So you need to think about these things you need to understand what the aspects of a website are, what the technology that backs it is, and you need to have a grasp of those before you even think about touching a computer and trying to code a website or use a program like Adobe Muse or Dreamweaver or WordPress to build one. So let's talk about the software you need to operate, run, and manage a website. Now we talked about HTML code. HTML code is how websites are traditionally built. 
but there are other editors called WYSIWYG editors or what you see is what you get and coders and programmers hate these applications because in their mind real web designers code i firmly disagree with that coders code designers design and you might be able to code and build a website but you might not be able to design your way out of a paper bag because you might be able to make this great robust functional website that is ugly as sin that can't sell your client's product and can't accomplish your employer's goals so that doesn't make you a designer that makes you someone who built a website and that's not a dig at coders like i said i've been coding since i was 14 years old i coded in notepad that's why I know what I'm talking about when I say that. There are people who style themselves as web designers who can't design. Now, there are designers who can design who don't know any technical things and can't code, but at the end of the day, people are more interested in how a website looks and presents and whether it you know, accomplishes getting someone to want to buy the product. And then if it doesn't work, then they get frustrated, but they will never get that far to figure out that the button they're clicking doesn't work if they look at the website, it's ugly as sin and they leave in under five seconds. And that's kind of the uh, conflict between coders and designers sometimes if they're not someone like me who is both. And I think it's important to be both. Is it difficult? Yes. Does it take more time and energy and training? Yes. But at the end of the day, you need to be able to accomplish well-placed aesthetic visually appealing design that can sell a product service um, get people engaged get people interested and then it actually needs to work under the hood and do what it's supposed to and then on top of that you're probably gonna have to learn how to market and promote this thing because if no one sees it then who cares but that's another conversation and that goes into search engine optimization how to rank in google which i will cover in other videos but circling back for a moment to tools so the tool that I prefer to use for hand coding and visual coding in split mode is Adobe Dreamweaver. I think Adobe Dreamweaver is great because it helps you organize your files, um, you know, set up a test server environment if you know how to do that kind of thing. You can see the code, but you can also see what it's creating in real time. You can get a feel for whether colors and fonts are working well and whether you need to change them. You can you know, do that with a client sitting over your shoulder or a supervisor sitting over your shoulder and make changes in real time without having to upload anything. And I think it's great from that point of view. I also think that the way that it visually works with um, color coding and some of the shortcuts are just gonna be better for productivity and speed. I love the CSS editor um, for doing certain things. And I just think it's faster. It's a lot easier on my eyes than a lot of the um, you know applications that um, hardcore programmers like to use. So you know that's what I prefer. Now that's if you're doing hand coding or a little bit of WYSIWYG. If you want to do straight up WYSIWYG, uh, what you see is what you get. No coding. You can use something like Adobe Muse, and you can actually vis visually draw out what a website looks like. And the thing I like about this is, like I said pen and paper first. So you could sketch the layout of a website just like you would if you were doing a traditional print advertisement. And then you can create that in Adobe Muse based on what you drew as a sketch. This is great when you're working at an ad agency because a lot of um, agency types, creative directors and art directors, a lot of them are a bit older and old school and they don't want some complicated explanation as to why you can't do something in code. For them, why can't you move it an inch to the left? Why can't it be perfectly centered? Why can't it be this? Why can't it be? they want to design websites and they want you to design websites the way that they design print ads using something like Adobe InDesign. So Adobe Muse is the perfect solution for that ad agency world if you're doing a website that's under 20 pages and doesn't require a blog or anything like that. So it's the perfect solution for that. Now, if you're gonna do something more robust and you need a blog and you need e-commerce, then I would suggest something like WordPress, which is a content management system. If you're doing e-commerce, maybe use OpenCart, OS Commerce, different things like that. I'll have to do a whole nother video on e-commerce platforms and what the best solutions are there. So make sure you subscribe and stay tuned to get that video from me. So again, those are your three basic types of web building applications. You have HTML, hand coding editors, and hybrid editors that do both. You have WYSIWYG or visual design applications, and then you have content management systems, which function like you know WordPress and Joomla. And these are pretty simple to use once they're installed, and updating and adding pages is as, as, as simple as updating a Facebook page. So that's why a lot of people enjoy that platform. 
For managing and uploading things to a website, you want to use an FTP program, which is called a File Transfer Protocol Program. And that's just a complicated way of saying that we take it off your computer on your desktop and we put it onto the website. It is literally that simple. Uh, if you're using a Mac, then you might be using Fetch or Cyberduck. I prefer to use FileZilla for both Windows and Mac. If you're on Windows, I recommend WinSCP. It's a great tool. There's also browser-based ones you can use like Fire FTP. So those are some FTP programs that you should definitely look at using. Working on websites often means working with graphics as well. And uh, some basic programs you can use for graphics for your website, whether that's banner ads and background images and so on, are obviously Photoshop, which I prefer to use. Photoshop Elements, if you can't afford that or don't want to go to the subscription model. You could also use um, you know, Corel Photo Editor. You can use PaintShop Pro. You can use GIMP, which is free. You can use Painter.net. There's just a lot of applications that you can use for that. And again, links to all these things will be in the description below, so make sure you're checking that out. So let's talk about how you can learn to become a web designer today. When I learned how to become a web designer, we didn't have Google, unfortunately, and we didn't have YouTube. We had to use webmonkey.com and learn the basic principles there. I also learned by disassembling existing websites, modifying things in the code, and seeing what happened. And this was, again, something I was having to do um, in a challenging way using Notepad back in the day. Um, now we have a lot more applications like I talked about. You have free editors, you have uh, Composer, which is a good free editor for HTML. And again, you have things like Adobe Dreamweaver and so on to be able to do this, Notepad++. So again, you don't have to use Notepad like I did way back when. Experimenting, disassembling existing websites using books and using websites like uh, webmonkey.com were really the only way that someone not going to school for it, and it was still rarely being offered in college at the time, and then this is back in the um, late 90s, early 2000s, uh, that was the only way to really learn web design. Today you have things like Code Academy, Khan Academy, uh, Learning Tree, you have uh, Linda, Udemy, YouTube, uh, you have blogs like mine, you have all these different ways that you can learn about web design and HTML code, and you know I think that that's great, and I think you should take advantage of that. Yes, you can go to college to learn web design, but again, um, the value of that might be a mixed bag of nuts because, again, you're seeing the trouble that people are having with going to college, taking out student loans, the job market being what it is, um, a degree not being enough to get a job anymore. So if you want to avoid some of those things and you want to get real world skills, you can do it on your own. You just have to be disciplined enough to do it. And remember, there are kids and teenagers doing this every day. And even years ago as a teenager, I was able to do it. And within a summer, I was at a point to where I was actually starting to get paid for building websites for people locally. So just keep in mind, this is something you can teach yourself. You don't have to pay for it. But if you do want to pay, it's cheaper to try to do it through something like lynda.com or Udemy or Skillshare or any number of online learning sites to try it first at a lower price point than paying hundreds of dollars for a college course. So just try and give that a shot before you go to that traditional model. I'll have some recommended books in the description below that you can use to try and learn HTML coding and the principles of web design as well. So some other things you need to know if you're going to be a web designer in 2015 aside from the tools that we talked about, learning things like WordPress as far as content management systems. You might want to pick up uh, things like jQuery, JavaScript, and a little bit of PHP as well. Having these under your belt will help you as a web designer because you'll have more flexibility, you'll be able to do more complicated tasks, and you won't be restricted by the limitations of just doing front-end work. You'll be able to do um, some more complex and advanced things as well. I also think you should look at learning some visual design skills in terms of typography so that you can lay out your websites in a way where the text is readable and pays attention to visual hierarchy. I think you should learn the gestalt principles of graphic design, which I'll cover in other videos. And I think you should learn visual editing and photo retouching so that you can make banner ads and make really impressive looking websites that don't rely on basic colors, shapes, and text alone to be visually interesting so you can draw people in and have an effective website for your customers, your employers, um, your clients, what have you. It goes without saying today, you wanna to learn about SEO search optimization, get people to go to a website and how to rank in Google. I'll have other videos you know, covering that. If you have questions, you can leave them in the comment section below and I'll try and answer them. But again, I'll cover that in other videos. 
Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video on how you become a web designer in 2015. Again, I'll answer any questions you still have in the comment section below. Like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Let me know what other videos on web design you want me to cover. As always, you guys, thanks so much for watching. And don't forget, create something awesome today.